Hey y'all, what's up? It's the Godbolts. We back. We back. We back. And we are currently in Mexico. Y'all can't tell by the fits. If y'all can't tell. <laughs> y'all <laughs> we can't are tell on a vacation celebrating our two year anniversary. Yeah. And we wanted to just do a video chatting with you all about what we've learned in like the last year or up until this point. Because at first I was like, we only been married for two years. Like, what do we really have to say? But at the same time, there's people that literally don't make it to this point. Like there's a lot of people who get married and divorced within a year or two years or three years, yeah. which is such a short amount of time. But that first, I think, beginning season of marriage is so hard for everybody. Like everybody has like a hard season in the beginning, just getting used to being married. Transition. So yeah, transition from like Crazy. individuals to being one. Yeah. And so process. the process. And so obviously we did a whole podcast yeah. show, the God Boat Life podcast, season Word. one. Check that out. Check that out. On all, available on all streaming platforms. Yes. Oh, is it raining? So we shared a lot about our marriage and like our relationship and all of that stuff in season one. But since we were here in Mexico, we figured we should take the time to actually give you all a little update, share some things that we've learned even since, you know, yeah. producing and putting out season one of the God of Life podcast. So here we are. And I, I say we start here, right? Let's start with, so one of the traditions that we have, well, a few traditions that we have, one that we've taken honestly from like birthdays of um what is the one thing that you learned over the past year mm -hmm. um really like more more of a reflection part that's kind of like your your catapulting into what's to come and we've actually since made that a tradition in our marriage life because we take a trip just me and her for our anniversary where like yeah we're enjoying ourselves we're enjoying each other but we're also using that as a time to get closer to god to hear god for our marriage and, and what he wants us to work on individually and both together and so one of the questions we ask on these trips is what is the biggest thing that you've learned a from from the past year but also what does how did you do on last year's things so for me it was rest like my past year our first our second year of marriage for me was to focus on rest mm -hmm. and i was very transparent even when we started that conversation of like i've i've never had anybody tell me to rest in my life um not you know coaches managers siblings parents family like rest coming from a culture of you know black folks we out here grinding and hustling, hustling and we getting it yeah at all times yeah that no one's telling you the importance of rest i remember um one of my first nike events in marketing it was a unveil in new york city and we had this um distance runner galen rupp so he's sitting sitting around kids and like the kids can ask him questions about his training anything they want to ask and one of the kids asked him, what's the most important part of his training? And I'm just in the back of the room, like making sure everything <laughs> goes where it's supposed to go. And I hear this one question and he goes, I sleep 10 hours a day. That's the most important part of my training. And the room is silent because everybody's expecting him to say, well, he's a distance runner. So like I run 10 miles a day or I eat 20 plates of beets or, or like these wild things that mm -hmm. we, when we think about training and being good at anything, we only think about the work. And what you we can don't do. think about the rest. Right. So in marriage, same exact thing. You think about the work. A lot of people are talking about how much work marriage is and while that's true, rest is also a part of marriage. Stopping is a part of marriage. Yeah. Doing trips like this, date nights, things where you're always going and this is an opportunity to sit down, take a deep breath. And also, like, this just came to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Rest is a form of weakness. Mm -hmm. And we know in our weakness, God's strength is made perfect or complete. Yeah. So while I'm resting, God is doing it. Yeah. Better than I ever could. Yep. But if I never stop to actually rest, 
how do I know that? And how do I know? When does he ever have the opportunity? When does he ever have the opportunity do to do it? Yeah. On your behalf. Yeah. Even he, like sleeping, right? Like our yeah. bodies are, are are heal themselves. Like they have the capability mm -hmm. to heal themselves. They heal the most when, when I'm asleep. dormant, when I'm sleeping. Yep. Because I'm not, you know, I'm healing, but you know, there's paper due, so I'm trying to stay awake to get that done, and I'm putting other stuff in my body to keep myself awake. I'm mm -hmm. reverse engineering what my body was supposed to right, do right. because of what I wanted to do. Even versus, thinking versus. of that, like how much we are trying to reverse what our bodies are naturally telling us. Like when we're sleepy, when we're tired, we don't think, well, maybe I need to go lay down. No, we take we, five of energy or drink, or some, drink coffee. some coffee. <laughs> or drink some coffee or, you know, you know, anything to keep us alert and even keep natural us, things right like yeah we can use a natural thing out of context as well yeah like uh, one of my spiritual mentors always says water is good for drinking but you wouldn't put it in your gas tank right as good as water is it's not for everything yeah. and oftentimes we can even even using a natural remedy to stay awake is still not what we were naturally created yeah. to do in that moment because we have to remember that our bodies are not our own either right like if we're so tired and we're so groggy and we're so like lack of rest, lack of sleep, then we're not being the best conduit of God's movement, of God's power, of what he wants to partner with us to do in our lives for other people. If we can't even stay awake, if we can't even like think about how frustrated you get when you're sleeping, you're tired. Yeah. Like think about how quick to being agitated and yeah. quick to being like, frustrated you are when you don't have sleep and so we live in a world where people really fight rest so much and what we've learned in this past year through listen trial and error okay of yeah. like getting so frustrated that we're like okay there's got to be something else because it can't just be going hard all the time yeah. and when we weren't married and before the kids really it was like we would go hard as individuals like he would go hard in his career. I would go hard in my career. Now we're still working and bills haven't lessened. They've increased. But yet we have to do that on top of raising kids and on top of being each other's spouse. So it's like we're going hard all the time, whether we like it or not. Before it was a choice. Like, yeah. do I want to go do this extra thing? Do I want to stay longer at work? Do I not? You know, versus now, it's like, no, it's always going to be on. It's always yeah. going to be something to do. Yeah. So if you don't bake into your regimen, into your routine rest, yeah. then you literally will never get it. And then all sorts of other things pile on top of that that be having you confused. Like, you know, why am I always so stressed out? Why am I always feeling like super you know high and then i'm super low like that sort of volatility in just your mood and like all that stuff comes from a lack of balance in your life and so if you're going hard then that means you also got to go hard on the rest too at times so that's something that like we really learned in the last year of our marriage and specifically we started practicing sabbath yeah that in was this the, last year that was the action mm -hmm. like the action for me because if I've never done something to expect myself to just roll into it is it ill-advised. It's yeah. setting myself up for failure. Whether we realize it or not, there's a pattern of how we do things. We have habits, good and bad habits. Yeah. We have them. And so if rest is not a habitual thing for me at that moment, well, I'm going to have to put something there so that it can be. So for me, it was a Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So Sabbath on Saturdays where well, I don't, you know, plan work. I don't do any events. I don't do anything. I literally spend time with God, however that looks. And at first it was just me. And I did it for, for about three weeks. And every Saturday, like I already knew, okay, yo, Saturday is chilling, nothing. It's me and God and, you know, family stuff, the kids, um, whatever. And, Three weeks in, Jay decided to start doing it with me. And I didn't I didn't force her. Like I told her, babe, this is what I'm doing and mm -hmm. like I hope that you can respect that. So like <laughs> I'm not doing house chores, I'm not doing like different things. It's like I'm not. I'm resting. And 
sure enough, she starts to do it. And it really transformed our home as a whole. And I think that our kids are better for it. I think that our marriage is better for mm -hmm. it. And it was funny because, you know, people would bring up, oh, scripture says Jesus is our Sabbath and all that. Okay. <laughs> well, if that's what you believe. Um, <laughs> that's what you believe. Um, even if I used this to train myself to rest, that's enough for me. Right. Like, God, God is not mad at me for Sabbathing. Right. And he actually prefers that we do. He Sabbath. He did it. Like, he rested. Jesus did it. <laughs> yeah. So, as our examples, right. if they did it, well, Why? it must be good enough for me. And it should be something <laughs> we do, right? Yeah. Like, God yeah. wants us to emulate him, emulate Jesus. And if they rested, and if Jesus and walked then why would we not take that same pace to our lives as much as possible? Because if you really think about it, everything else in the world is opposite of God and opposite of what he really wants for us. He wants us to rest. He wants us to have joy and peace yeah. and life. Yet we live in a world where hustle hard, hu hustle hard, harder, sleep when you dead, have a nine to five and a five to nine. And, and it's, it's just, just like that's so not intense. that's not of God. Yeah, and it's not what we've been that's shown. Not it's not life. What we've been taught because that's not life. If if God is made strong, if God's strength is made perfect in our weakness, what's the other side of that? In our strength, His power is incomplete. Mm -hmm. If you're a believer, then you believe that His power. This much of his power is greater than maximum of my power. Yeah. So what am I doing? Right. And it's so simple that it's also hard to comprehend. Yeah. yeah. Because for us, we think that it has to be strategic and it has to be very calculated and it has to like look a certain type of way. And the simple fact is it doesn't. Yeah. It, it it just doesn't look the way we a yeah. lot of times expect it to because again we are in a world that is so off in yeah. so many different ways clearly look at the state of the world you know it's like how do you make any of these things make sense food shortages that are coming up like people shooting up schools like the pandemic cows keeling over and dying by the thousands fish dead in the sea yeah, like stay on the, i know stay i know on, i'm on saying i'm Earth just Earth. saying <laughs> Major point. i'm just saying there's so much in the world that is very confusing and can make you believe that there is no order and that there is no process and that there is no bigger picture but when you rest and you have time to quiet your mind and stop trying to figure out why these things are happening or why certain things have happened to you, God can reveal his peace that is unlike anything else on the earth. And the point that we're trying to make is that you cannot get that sort of peace while you're doing 20 other things. You have to choose to slow down, to stop, and to make it a habit to rest and find your like place of quiet time with God. It's not to say that you gotta sit in your room by yourself for three hours a day and no, but maybe that is what God is calling you to do. We don't know that. There's nobody in between you and God. We're just explaining and expressing how God has worked that through us in like our lives and saying we can be an example for you, but you know his voice. His sheep know his voice. And we are all his sheep. Some of us are lost. And even with being lost, you can hear him. It's that it's that quiet conscious, that that quiet voice that's telling you, you know, why don't you skip that event? Skip that you, happy hour. Or if just, you lost, you can't hear him. That's the, that's the point of, well, of everything. When you lost, you can't hear him. So, like, part of Sabbath is slowing down enough yeah. 
quieting down the distractions yeah. that are going on in the world that are going on around you to actually hear whatever it is that he wants to, to show you if you if if you if you have a cubby like we all have a cubby seven cubbies and each cubby represents a day if all those cubbies are full of stuff that we want to do mm -hmm. then there's no space for god and we know that the holy spirit doesn't just bombard you they're not gonna be she's not gonna be the loudest voice <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's not gonna be that so so it's taking time whether that's the sabbath or what have you not to just be quiet but to be quiet and and, and then ask god seek and you shall find what it is that he has for you what it is that he wants you to do and that may be just rest yeah for us that may be yeah. just quiet that may be just calm what's going on around you yeah and what would start as what started as just rest like one of the we're working on an incredible collection olive and that came out of sabbath coming this fall coming this fall but like that came out of sabbath it came out of quieting down everything else and it's this, this this idea this concept that this is most people's issue with the sabbath right this is when we go legalism on people when you start to think about the things that you can't do like when you start to think about what you're sacrificing we ignore the point of sacrifice and we get stuck on what it is i have to sacrifice Mm -hmm. So it's the well. Saturdays is normally my days to do this. Like we get to, and then we start to. Well, the Bible says that the Sabbath, my Sabbath is in Jesus. So I got it, and it's not because we shouldn't do it. It's because of the sacrifice. So we try to find a way around not doing the sacrifice. And what we have to realize and focus on is the obedience side yeah. of things. Because most of the time, it, God doesn't have to make sense to us. Like, like my parents didn't have to make sense to me. For me to listen to what they told me to do. For me, me to listen to, to what they told me to do. If my mom said, don't run out in the street. Well, that don't really make sense, mom, because we live in a culture sack and I should be able to play. Right. But a car could come and hit you. Right. So it's not about it, it, saving. Saving is a concept that when you're young... <laughs> money burning a hole in your pocket you want to spend it mm -hmm. so when your folks say save money it don't make sense to you as to why you would save it because you didn't work to get it so in your mind it's gonna just come back yeah but they know no like you have to earn this when you have to give something for it you think of money differently yeah so it's like god being our father him to tell me to rest him to tell me to do sabbath i may not understand it at first but it's in my obedience that I actually draw closer, draw nearer to him. Yeah. Then he can share things like the Olive Collection. Then he can share things like the memo. Things like, hey, like y'all should do this. Y'all should. That didn't come from me just sitting there for three hours trying to think of it myself. Mm -hmm. It came from me taking a position of weakness so that God's strength can be evident. So I've always had a passion for me. And it started when I realized that although I didn't have my biological father in my life, and even at times I didn't even have a man in my life, from my standpoint of like what I thought that I should have, God always provided me with people that were around me that I was pulling, pulling things from, whether I ever told them or not, whether I even realized it or not. Mm -hmm. And that led me to believe that as men specifically, we're always looking for mentorship. We're always looking for, for somebody to model after. And it's oftentimes when we can't find that or when we're looking for it over here and God is doing it, doing it over here that we find our missteps, that we find our biggest mistakes, that we find our quote unquote regrets. And when I got a chance to, to, to really dive into my relationship with God and that started to grow, the need for community also started to grow. Yeah. But not just any community, but community that was after the heart of God. Yeah. And that were doing life God's way. Yeah. Because another big thing I learned, it started with us. Men. It starts with men. So Sabbath, 
my relationship with God and where my wife is today, I only had a lot of examples of like, you know, the woman is the one that's going to church all the time and she's the one that's leading spiritually. But when I discovered the power as the head that I had when it's submitted to God, how that affects everything else around me, that was something that, that I wanted to share with other people. So the memo is essentially that, where that's turned into a group of men that are after God's own heart. We encourage each other, we pray for each other, we fast with each other, we, we are, are, are accountable to each other. And we're all different. We all bring a different skill set to the table, different careers. We're all in different parts of life. We're ages probably 28 to 40. So it's different, different um, um, age, age groups. But the constant is Jesus Christ. Yeah. It ultimately, it ultimately reminds me of the, the disciples and how they were all from different places, all different occupations, all left different things, all had different up, upbringing. But the constant was Jesus. The constant was we're all following this, and that's our constant. Like we we started in Matthew, started with Jesus. We're about the Word of God. Like that's the that's the tiebreaker every single time. That's the bar. So the memo is that collective, and right now it's just a Bible study. Um, we're working on the website, working on creating content that we can like share, so that more men have access to what God is sharing with us because it's not for us. Yeah, and yeah. it's not one person. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not just me or or running it. Yeah. It's them as a collective. Yeah having an intimate place to share to open up and vulnerability like as men yes. like that's a big thing yes that i was looking for so back to that story about like looking for things vulnerability was always something that i was looking for because i grew up in a time where like the ogs ain't really giving you real maybe they give you the stuff that that worked for them mm -hmm. but they may not give you what didn't work which may be what you need because that's what you're in. That's what you're going through. And I, I want to add this to that, which is something that I don't, I don't think you recognize enough is like, with all that being said, the people that are doing the wrong things are louder about it. So while you may have grown up around some good men, because they weren't vulnerable enough to say, yes, I'm a good man, but there's yeah. these other aspects of me yeah. that I have to battle on a regular basis because of my past, because of this yeah. or whatever, yeah. because they were not proclaiming those things and being transparent. The, the men who were out here in the streets doing whatever were loud about it. They had no shame. So you see two different things happening you see the men that you think are good not speaking about the reality of what yeah. it takes to be a good man yeah. and then you're seeing other men who are loud about their sin teaching you whether they want to claim that or not you're taking it as an example of yeah like well we're taking it as an example whether we what whether you realize it or not you're yes. being impacted right period right so as that, a man, like you're gonna all, yeah. be a leader, whether you want to be or not. Right. You may be leading in the wrong things, or you could be leading in the right things, but you're leading regardless because someone is always watching you. Yes. So because we know that, this community is just we're different. We know that we're different. Um, we know that the transparency, the vulnerability that we bring to the table is different, and we thrive in it because it's not us. Yeah. It's him. Yeah. And when we got us having each other even puts that fear in the rearview mirror yeah because no matter what the world says we got us yeah so yeah it, it it's um it's growing it's a movement and that was just one of the many things that came out of resting yeah like stopping so that we can hear god yeah and yeah it's a thing yeah the memo the instagram page is the memo for men my thing for the last year was really trying to work on being a team player and not feeling like I had to always have it all figured out myself 
and stepping out of that like driver's seat and it began with our marriage as far as like you having this this um directive of like practicing sabbath and then obviously we started practicing it as well as a family and that began and and it necessarily didn't begin something for me but it kind of was the next step of what god was already working in me which was this transition out of being super 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 career focused and focused on you know building my platform as lipstick and curls and having these you know other career focused goals and actually having personal goals also because to me before I got married and had kids those were my goals like okay eventually like I want to be married I want to have kids but there really wasn't much thought beyond that and so once we got there it was like okay now what and a lot of different things have been happening over this past year and many of you all know like just me changing my name making that decision even though it may not have been quote unquote the best business decision it was something god told me to do so in obedience in that it didn't make sense to me it still is kind of not making sense to me to be honest but i'm working through that <laughs> And understanding more and more every day why God has been shifting me. And I believe that part of that was also learning how to be in a support role. Because for so much of my life, especially my adult life, I didn't have to be in a support role. Like it was me calling the shots, me giving the direction, me making the decisions. And... So being in a support role as a wife was different for me. And there's a lot of different types of perspectives you could have as a wife or a woman coming into being a wife. And a lot of what I saw and see from wives is this, 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 this theme of like a woman not being complete until she's a wife instead i felt like i was complete before i was a wife but i really wasn't so how does that look because you're not complete until you get married in our opinion facts. because in the bible's opinion in the bible's opinion <laughs> the bible's facts because you cannot you cannot grow to your fullest potential without having someone there to actually practice the things that God says we're supposed to do. And we all have a back. You got a back? Yeah. Can you see your back? No. Can you see your back? No. So, 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 at, I remember um, one of our premarital counseling sessions, we had been like fighting. It was actually a, a session, uh, it was an impromptu session that wasn't supposed oh. to happen, but the fight was so crazy that oh, it had to happen. It had to. It was an emergency and call. <laughs> they were like, uh, put up your dukes. Mm -hmm. Older folks. <laughs> they ain't that much older. <laughs> put, up <y> Terry Lee. <laughs> put up your dukes. You put up our dukes. They was like, that's the way y'all look right yeah, now. Yeah, like fighting. Yeah. Then they had us turn around. Yeah, back to back. Like now, this. I got her back and she has mine. I can always see my front. Yeah. I didn't need help seeing my front. Yeah. I can see that. Right. But I can't see my back. Right. So... How can I be complete if I have this back and God don't make mistakes? God could have made us with eyes in the back of our head. He could have made us double faced it if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. Nothing is impossible for God. That's biblical. Yeah. So the fact that he did not, yet he introduced his marriage. He tells Adam, it ain't good for you to be alone, bro. Yeah. And, and Adam thing, was in a perfect world. And it wasn't like the, he was <laughs> lacking. Well, and anything. this is the thing, too, because you can also have companionship in community yeah. right like if you aren't married yeah but there is nothing like marriage there's a level of vulnerability there's, but there's that you're forced not to even have. that it's covenant yeah. so covenant marriage is a covenant yeah. so there's a different level of protection in that there's a different level of 
a companionship in that mm -hmm. that nothing else will ever be able to match period nothing. so nothing. you can't debate or compare marriage to anything else because it's not comparable god doesn't make us make a covenant with our kids no god doesn't make us make a covenant with best friends with sisters with brothers no it's only with covenant with god and covenant with your husband or your wife period yeah. so there's something to be said about that and recognizing that if that is where I've chosen to go as far as like in my life, I've chosen to be a wife, then that means I have to embrace what that truly means to be able to actually experience the fruits of marriage and what it really has the power to do and also unlock the purpose of our marriage. Because as individuals, we have purpose, but we also have a purpose. There's a purpose on our, specifically our marriage. And so- and Marriage actually helps you to the purpose that God created for you. Absolutely. People bring up, Paul and Jesus. Paul was married because Paul was a Pharisee, and Pharisees viewed men as half of half of a man if you weren't married. So we don't know if he got a divorce. We don't know the whole story, but at some point Paul was married, and Jesus was Jesus. Jesus was God. He was complete. He, he didn't. He was already complete. Yeah. He didn't. He wasn't growing towards yeah. anything. So using those excuses as reasons not to, to be die, a, yeah which was which is the 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 my biggest lesson from marriage over the past year like my goal was around rest and resting more but what i learned in marriage was about dying mm -hmm. how real that is and i think that actually also goes into what you're talking about as well yeah. about changing yourself because yeah because I never yeah. heard women who were like type A, very successful, uh, you know, had a life previous to their husband, like talk about what it was really like to transition into being a wife. Because- A wife God's way, not a wife However culturally. you tr decide to do yeah. it, right. Yeah. Because I'm called to help him. So what happens if my calling to help him means I have to sacrifice what I want to do professionally, personally. Well, God called me to help him. So I have to choose that and not have, and really die to my selfish ambitions. Because a lot of times we can be so gifted in so many different things, but God didn't do that by mistake there's a time and place and season for everything, yet we have to be close to him. We have to be able to hear him and say, yes, you can do all 10 of these things, but I need you to use this specific gift right now mm -hmm. and doing that. So me as a wife, I had to stop. I had not necessarily stop, yes, but I had to get out of the habit of always choosing what my ambition was pulling me to versus actually looking at the full picture of our marriage of our family and recognizing like where we are right now like we're in a season where we got small kids we got another baby on the way we're building a brand we're building the memo a ministry and it it's going to look different than life is going to look different than it did five years ago for us yeah and so that was not easy for me and this year has been a lot of me killing and dying to our marriage to him in the sense of giving up things that I had worked on, that I had like dreamt about, that I had made so make made so much sense of in my mind, but maybe wasn't what God was telling me to do right now. And recognizing that, yes, I have gifts. And God is going to use them. But there's a reason why God has given me so many gifts. There's a reason why God has given you so many gifts. Because he does want to tap into all of them. Yeah. He wouldn't have given you a, a bunch of different interests and, and abilities if he didn't plan on using them, you know. And one of the things that I was talking to one of our good friends about, she's a wife as well, the other day. This concept of, you know, having a vision from God, but 
it not being immediately right now when you're supposed to do that thing and recognizing that you know he's going to promise us things right he's going to show us things but maybe it's not our current reality but we want them to be our current reality so we try to shift our actions or or you know prematurely reach this vision or figure out how we're going to get the promise when in all actuality god is just giving us that so that we continue on so that we don't think that he's forgotten about us that he doesn't think that or that we don't think that he's just you know using us for somebody else and maybe that is his purpose for us too like what if my purpose now for this I don't know, whatever season of, of life, however long this season is, is for me to just focus on being the best wife and best mother I can be. I have to embrace that if that is what God is calling me to do. I have to. If I do not, then it'll be more turmoil on me than it is, and, and, and him and our family, than it will be anything else. Because it'll be me constantly fighting what God's will is. And the other piece of that is, this is what I was really trying to say earlier, is that even with so many of our gifts, and maybe God is saying, put those down for right now. I need you to focus over here right now. Even when, because God is so good and he's so gracious and so merciful, even when we start veering off a little bit, we start using our gifts that he was like, I told you to put that down for right now, but because I love you so much, I'm gonna let you do it. You're gonna be stressed trying to do it on top of what I told you to do over here. Like you're gonna be stressed, but I'll allow you to go through that because I need you to understand how peaceful it is when you just do what I'm telling you to do. Sometimes we gotta go through that process multiple times over. Like that's what it's been like for me God's been telling me, focus on being a wife, focus on being a mom, but I still want to start businesses. I still want to, you know, ideate things that I, you know, want to do over here with other gifts of mine. And I end up getting in these cycles of stress and fear and anxiety because I'm like, but what about this? And what about that? And I just don't feel fulfilled over here and over here. And I don't, and it's like, we have been given a lie that you can have everything all the time, always. Yeah. That's just simply Anything not. Your mind yes, you can get it. And it's like right now, and that's no. just not. I mean, we take scriptures out of context, and we try to, you know, paint God as a genie in a bottle. Yeah. And anytime you see God talking about, um, um, I want to need. He, the caveat is always within his will. Right. We all we either skip over that scripture to get to the one we want to hear, or we don't keep reading. It's always attached to his will. Right. Not so, whatever we not want. Not whatever we want. So the concept yeah. is always to what did God say? Yeah. And trusting his plan for our lives, not our own. Choosing what he says and not what we say. And if you are confused as to, well, God don't talk to me. I don't know what he wants me to do. Go to his word. What does he tell you to do as a person, just in general? He says to love God with all your heart. He says to love your neighbor more than yourself. He says to operate with the fruits of the spirit, which are kindness, peace, joy, self-control. Like, start there. Start treating yeah. the people around you better. Yeah. Start, start putting away the desire to do what you want to do and instead do what your husband wants to do start to practice those things because when you are practicing those things you're actually welcoming the holy spirit to dwell in you and you're actually in partnership with god in those moments even as small as he wants lasagna and i want alfredo pasta we can have lasagna like Simple as that, putting him first, putting someone else before myself and practicing that in small ways and work your way up to big ways. Being kind to people that right. don't deserve to be being kind to. But that, like what you're describing, like starts at home. Yeah. 
you don't just go outside and just start being nice to people. Yeah. Like it starts at home. It start. That's how it started for me. It's how it started for us. Mm-hmm. Cause what she's describing is what I have to do first. Yeah. <laughs> like, that itself. Yeah. Set that example of what that looks like. Cause I wasn't. I didn't understand that concept until I saw him actually do it. And I didn't understand that concept until I started doing it. And it yeah. hurts. Yeah. It doesn't get easier. Yeah. So I'm not going to lie to you and say, well, get... no. Yeah. Like, I'm dying daily. Yeah. And the more I do it, the more God is actually calling me to do it more. Like, he shows me, as soon as I think I'm, I'm, I'm good over here with getting up at midnight to make her a sandwich. Yeah. He says, all right, cool. Now it's time to work on your repentance. Yeah. Now it's time to apologize every day. Yeah. Like, and it's consistent dying. Now it's time to, yes, she wrong, yeah. but you can't tell her she wrong. I'll tell her she wrong. Mm-hmm. You deal with it. And whenever she come back around and tell her she wrong, that's when it happens. If it don't happen, it don't happen. Because you don't understand what God can do through your obedience for other people. Yeah. That's something that I could have never understood without us being married. Mm, that's good is when you practice being kind for no reason when you practice being gentle and being calm and not trying to charge somebody up when they're wrong but instead allowing them to okay well i'm just going to be kind i'm going to give you a kind response instead of like telling you about yourself what that can do for everyone around you because like that would have never stuck for me if it wasn't me watching him do it on a daily consistent basis which is why the memo is so important and such a something that I'm so passionate about for him and for the men that it touches is because I recognize that when he got it together it was so much easier for me to follow him but it also was such a game changer for my own growth because I actually had a person trying and actually succeeding in obeying God right in front of my eyes. And even when I didn't deserve to be treated kindly, he treated me kindly. And that is a weapon. That's a picture of God. That is literally like... Like That's marriage. Marriage done the way God intended is a picture of God. So every single day, if she wants to know for starters, like... And we're talking about the lowest level of God, Mm -hmm. the lowest level of patience. Like, God is beyond anything that I could ever do for her. But even her seeing, wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. That just shows us the impact of a little bit of God. Just a little bit. Just a tad, a little bit. And it's enough, again, for you to taste and see. And so, like, you want more. And it becomes part of your lifestyle, but it has to come with intimacy. And you can do this in community, but you have to be vulnerable in your community. You have to have transparency in your community. You have to have intimacy. It can't be 50 people. It may just be one or two if you're not married, you know, or if you are married, it's your husband or your wife first. And with communities, I can choose how much to to and how much. Yeah. But I can't do that with her. Right. There's no option. It's not gonna work. Right. If it, if you it, well if you I can't, if I can't you keep get out choosing of this. if you keep choosing whether or not you want to be nice to me or not or kind to me or not, then we just gonna be fighting. Yeah. And having yeah. strife and, and issues. I can't longer, get a new conflict longer, longer, longer. I can't get a new group. Like like I can't get a new wife. I can get a new group. Yeah. That's why marriage is the tap into community because it's also but it's also why singleness is so precious yeah so that you can do a little bit of this over here and figure out what works for you get a little bit over there and figure out what works for you like that's why having community while you're single is super crucial and something that i wish i would have um nurtured and poured into more because I had it at times in my adult life, like in different moments, like I would have like some of my line sisters or some of my sorority sisters that we would do Bible study and things together where we, those moments st- stick out to me in my adult life because they really helped me get on track in different seasons. But when I think of like, you know, 
a lot of our close relationships even before actually we did have community like it wasn't the same community as we have now but it definitely was far more than what i think most people have because again we we've, we've believed in this lie that isolation works better that we don't need nobody yeah. that if we keep have one keep issue people at right this length, so exactly you can't get as close as you would need to right. be to see who i really am to right. help me to grow yeah <laughs> and and that is a lie it's yeah. a trick to keep you from who you you're from supposed growing. to be Facts. exactly Facts. so with all that being said you know i know uh, with all that being said you know that's really what has been super eye-opening and just growth stimulators for us in the past year in our marriage which is you know resting um and practicing sabbath and really allowing god to speak in those moments for us to be able to practice rest yeah. but also practicing um intentionality with slowing down and really listening to what he's calling us to do with what gifts we have because as two very high achieving very highly gifted people we can get distracted we can get we can lose focus we can yeah. you know get pulled into random directions and yeah. then get off course and yeah. it's like what resting has helped us do is stay the course and stay focused and i think that has been um that's been huge for us as individuals and as a married couple yeah 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 okay do you want to close it say anything else nah i don't want to say nah <laughs> No, um, no, nah, I really don't want to say nothing. Else. Okay, so, great. So. All right. Well, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for watching. Uh, we appreciate it. If you haven't checked out the Gobble Life podcast, you can watch it here on YouTube. You can also listen to it on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. Spotify. Leave wherever us you a get review. Your podcast. Yes, wherever you get your podcast, but leave us a review wherever you're listening to your podcast too, because that is super important in the podcast world. And we really appreciate the reviews and the comments on there as well. And yeah, definitely share this video, share the podcast with other people that you know are trying to chase after God's heart, trying to get their marriage life together, yeah. just trying yeah. to get to a better place in life. Um, you know, we encourage you to like keep keep working. Um, keep going. Like, keep don't going. Quit. Don't quit. A lot it's of times you quit. get discouraged and it's easy to quit. Well, sometimes but it's hard to quit, but still don't do it. Don't, yeah, quit. don't do it. Don't do it. Keep yeah. going. Keep yeah. growing. Even if you feel like you fall off the saddle here and there and you have moments like we all have moments. We all going to have moments until the day we meet Jesus. OK, so don't worry about that. It's just about always trying to be better and don't kill yourself over it you know like that's not the way god sees us like god he's knows, pleased god when we try hearts. yes god knows our hearts yes 100 god knows when this was a mess up and when you intended it like yeah. god it man oftentimes don't know but god does yeah. and that's what makes his grace and love so incredible is because he can tell the difference yeah um I'm go ahead okay God, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for this conversation. God, we pray that it reaches every person that it's supposed to reach. Even if that's just one, God, we know that that's your will and we're just being obedient to what you want us to do and to say. God, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. God, towards others, towards one another. Um, God, continue to mold our hearts and shape them in the way that you want them to be. God, I pray for every single marriage. I pray that you make your strength felt in every single marriage. I come against every spirit of divorce, every spirit of negativity, every spirit of conflict, anything that is coming, coming against what your plan is for marriage, Father God. We pray a, a full strength in marriage. We pray that love is present. We pray that repentance is present. We pray that people just get into the habit of saying, I'm sorry. God, we thank you for truth in marriage. The marriage is a sacrifice. The marriage is us being able to have a, a, a form of you in our lives every single day. And we thank you for that, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Peace out.